it's my pleasure um, to talk about how to make lentivirus. And good morning, good afternoon, and good, good night, depending on where you are. So you already know that um, lentivirus is a powerful gene delivery tool. For some cells, such as um, primary cells, uh, stem cells, heart to transfect cells, and immuno cells, as Sean mentioned, that for immune uh, CAR T production, the regular chemical-based the transfection reagent, the transfection efficiency is very low. However, lentivirus can efficiently deliver the genes into those cells. More details why choose lentivirus over plasmid transfection. So the process, um, if you get uh, lenti particles, you can just add two cells. If you need to make the virus, the process is also very mature, and this is what we are going to cover today. For plasmid transfection, you need to find an efficient transfection reagent if it's possible. Regarding delivery efficiency, lentivirus is very high. With the plasmid transfection, it varies. For cell spectrum, lentivirus can infect most cell types, but with the plasmid transfection, it's very limited. For genome integration, lentivirus integrate into the genome, but plasmid transfection, the integration rate is very low. For in vivo studies, lentivirus can infect tissues, but plasmid transfection is difficult to transfect tissues. So obviously, Lentivirus is a very powerful gene de delivery tool than plasma transfection. So this is overview. First, I, I will talk about how to make lentivirus. And there are several steps, such as uh, viral packaging and the enriched viral particles, how to measure viral titer, and how to increase the stability during storage. And then I will talk about lenti products that Origin offers. So I'm going to first talk about uh, how to package viral particles. Before diving in the detailed packaging protocol, I want to talk about um, the lenti vectors. And some of you have some questions. Commonly used lenti vectors are second generation and third generation vector. On this slide is the second generation vector. So the lenti vector, some people call the lenti transfer vector, contains your gene of the interest. And at the end, it has LTRs and the psi for packaging. The other essential viral gene for packaging are provided on separate plasma. We call it packaging plasma. To make lentivirus, you need to do co-transfection of the lenti vector together with the, the packaging plasma into HAC293 cells, and the packaging plasma will provide the essential viral protein to package the lenti vector into a solar particle. So only the lenti vector containing the LTRs will be packaged into the particles. So this is the third generation lenti vector. It's a safer. The front print LTR is hybrid, and the three primed LTR is a thin LTR. It contains a deletion of the U3 region, so which makes the virus to be replication deficient. And here are the packaging plasma for the third generation. It's provided on three separate plasma, and the TAT is no longer needed. So therefore, some of you have questions. If the third packaging system can work for second generation, the answer is no, because it does not provide TAT anymore. But the second, pack, second generation packaging system can work for the third generation vector. It's just with the extra TAT in the second system expressed but not used. Here's a diagram showing how to uh, package the virus, as I mentioned earlier. You need to do co-transfection of your lenti vector, lenti ORF or SHRNA, together with the packaging plasmids. Uh, co-transfect into hectometry T cells, and two days later, 
the virus will be produced uh, in the virus supernatant in the cell culture. So to summarize what you need, you need the linti or for SHRA and the linti packaging plasmids. You need a good transfection reagent, and this is critical. It needs a high transfection efficiency to get a, a good um, virus production, and you need HEC2 net B T cells. So Origin also has um, a linti packaging kit, linti V pack packaging kit. The comp it had two vials, one vial of uh, the linti packaging plasmid mixed, and the one vial of a transfection reagent turbofactin. So the packaging plasmid are optimized for high packaging efficiency at op optimal ratio and of high plasmid quality. And the turbofactin is a potent transfection reagent. It gives a very high transfection efficiency. We will show you the packaging efficiency later in the next slide. And this is for third generation system. So here is shows the high packaging efficiency using our packaging kit. A GFP tagged ORF clone CSF was a packaging with our packaged with our packaging kit and then transduced the HEC293 cells. And you can see um, the transfection efficiency is very high, almost 100%. So this is the packaging protocol. The day before transfection, you seed HEC293 cells into a 10 centimeter dish or a six well plate. And then for transfection, you use a turbofactin, transfect the linti vector with the packaging mix. And the next day, you change the media. Two days after transfection, your virus is uh, ready to be harvested from the supernatant. So the typical titer produced is about 10 to the 6th to 10 to the 7th TU per ml. So what factors can affect uh, the viral packaging? The fragment length between LTRs, if your insert is large, it might affect the viral titer. And uh, the plasmid quality and the ratio of the packaging uh, plasmids. Also, the healthy state of the HEC293 T cells can affect the packaging efficiency too. And uh, the transfection efficiency I mentioned earlier, that's critical for high titer virus production. So now you package your virus, you may need to enrich viral particles. Why do you need to enrich the particles? As I mentioned earlier, the typical titer produces about 10 to the 6th to 10 to the 7th. And if, uh, for example, if your insert is large, you have a low titer production, you need to rescue uh, the low titer virus. And the second reason is for some cell types, the transduction may need a higher titer. And the third reason is that you may need to change the viral buffer. So that's why you need to um, enrich the viral particles. So Origin has a um, reagent called linti concentrator. That's a solution that can be used to concentrate the virus. So the GFP linti virus was used to transduce HTT80 cells. And this is a immunofluor uh, this is a fluorescence uh, image. And this is the before concentration and this is uh, after 100x concentration. So you may be wondering why before concentration the fluorescence is so low. The actual fluorescence is as high as uh, the right side. If we use a typical exposure time, the concentrated virus will be super saturated. So it will be difficult to see the difference between before and after concentration. So with the, the concentration, you can rescue low titer easily up to 100 fold. And the procedure is very simple. Mix and centrifuge. No ultra centrifuge needed. So some of you have a question, how to do viral concentration without ultra centrifuge. And it also has an additional benefit that the concentrated virus can be protected from freeze and thaw. So this protocol is very simple and fast. So you add the concentrator solution to the virus, 
makes and incubate on ice for one and a half hour, and then spin down at uh, 35 G for 25 minutes, and the virus will be spin down. You'll raise centrifuge to remove any trace of the liquid, and then you can resuspend to any volume that you're interested. So next, you want to measure the titer. And um, some of you have a question, why do you want to measure the viral titer? So why is it for troubleshooting? For example, if you, your transduction failed, you want to know that's due to the transduction uh, step or due to viral packaging step. And uh, the second is uh, you are able to calculate MOI. MOI is a multiplicity of infection. That's the number of virus per cell during infection. To measure the viral titer, you can use P24 ELISA. P24 is a viral capsid protein. It has about 2,000 P24 molecules per virus. So therefore, you can convert a P24 amount to the viral particle number. So this is a diagram showing how P24 ELISA works. P24 capture antibody is coated on the plate. And then the P24 from the uh, viral sample will bind to the capture antibody. Then you add the P24 detection antibody. You can measure P24 amount. Origin also has a one wash linting titer kit is a P24 ELISA kit. So this shows the conventional ELISA. You have a wash step between every step. So there are four washes total, but with Origins one wash tartar kit, you only need one wash just before the substrate. So this way, it's a simplified workflow, only one wash, and it's convenient. Only room temperature handling needed. No incubation at 37. Also, shortened protocol, four hours versus overnight. The main difference is in the sample binding. For the conventional ELISA, it needs overnight incubation. But with our kit, it's only two hours. Now, talking about stability. So everybody knows that lentivirus loses uh, infectivity during storage, even at minus 80. So Origin has a reagent called the lentil stabilizer. That's a solution, a buffer. So this is a GFP lentivirus in, um, infected the hectonet V cells, and this is fluorescence image. You can see this is a fresh virus. It's very bright. And after storing in the original production buffer, the DMEM, at 80 degrees for a year, you can see the infectivity almost lost. In contrast, if the virus is stored in the lentil stabilizer, you can see the infectivity is preserved very well. And the origins lentil vir viral particles provided by origin are all provided in the lentil stabilizer. So how to change the viral buffer to lentil stabilizer. So we can combine concentration and change the viral buffer together. So basically, you can add the lentil concentrator solution to the virus and make the incubate spin it down. And then the virus is spin down in the um, pallet, and you can resuspend in lentil stabilizer. So summarize is mix spin down the virus and then change the buffer into lentil stabilizer. So this way you achieve the two purposes, concentrate the virus and the virus is more stable. So to summarize about, I have covered lentivirus production, um, how to package the virus and how to enrich viral particles, measure the titer and increase stability. At every step, origin has a kit or reagent. So like we have a high packaging efficiency kit to help viral, to do viral packaging and the lentil concentrator to concentrate the virus. So you, you can use the one wash titer kit to measure the titer and you use the lentil stabilizer to increase lentivirus stability. 
So next, I'm going to talk about the LinkedIn products that Origin offers. As I mentioned earlier, for make a virus, you need the content, the LinkedIn Wolf or LinkedIn SHRA. So this, um, we're going to talk about what Origin can offer you to make your research efficient. So the main LinkedIn products Origin offers are comprehensive genome-wide coverage, human, mouse, or rat. For gene overexpression, LinkedIn ORF is offered. To knock down the gene, we offer LinkedIn SHRNA. And there are two types of products offered, either LinkedIn plasmids that you can make the virus yourself, or ready to use the Linti viral particles is a pre titers ready to use. We also offer CRISPR Linti vectors, all in one CRISPR vectors and the GRA only CRISPR vectors. I will give you more details. So for Linti ORF CD clones, each ORF is offered in four different Linti vectors. So this slide shows two linti ORFs. In these two vectors, there's no pure selection. So this way, a larger ORF can be cloned. It has either C-terminal MCDDK fusion tag or C-terminal MGFP tag. So for the linti ORFs, um, those are provided with ORF already cloned. You don't need to clone yourself. It's ready to use. So these two linti ORFs are in a vector containing pure selection under P2A Puro. So you can use a puromycin to select your stable cells, either make it DK tagged or GFP tagged. So if you need a um, different tag or different selection marker, we have over 30 different linti vectors. Those are empty vectors, and you can clone the ORF into any of those vectors, it's by simple cut and the religation, either non-tagged or different tags or different selection markers. For Linti SHRA, between the ALTRs, there are three functional elements. One is the SHR under U6 promoter, one is a pure selection marker under SV40, and the GFP under CMV. So therefore, your transduced cells it will express your target SHRA and it will resist to pure selection and your cells will be green. So the SHR is offered as a kit. In each kit, there are five constructs. One scramble control and four gene-specific SHRAs. And we offer a performance guarantee of at least one out of the four SHRAs will give you 70% knockdown. So talk about the linti CRISPR vectors. So the vector on the left, that's the all-in-one CRISPR vector. It has a cloning site for GRN cloning. So GRN will be under U6 promoter. It also has a Cas9 expression under CMV promoter. So therefore, it's called all-in-one CRISPR vector. So the vector on the right is uh, for GRA cloning only, does not have Cas9. So it has a cloning site for GRA cloning under U6 promoter. In this vector, it also has a pure selection marker under CMV promoter. So therefore, you can use a puro to select your cells. Summary, um, Origin offers comprehensive linti products and we offer a complete linti virus production case or reagent. So therefore, Origin is a one-stop shop for your linti needs. I will be happy to answer any questions. In, um, in addition, we have a lot of uh, linti uh, resources posted on the website, such as FAQ. Some of you have questions, uh, such as if uh, Linti can be used for neuronal cells or MOI optimization. They are all in FAQ and post on the website. We will also have a previously recorded Linti webinar and the Linti videos. I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Uh, so now, 
the floor is open for questions. Um, your question can be typed in in the question. Uh, there's a, in the console. There's a question um, um, box. Just type your question in, and we will address them. So actually, during those uh, webinar, there's already question pouring in. So we can, while you st ask your question, we can address some of those already uh, being submitted. Okay, Minjuan. So one scientist asked, "What is TAT? T A T that you mentioned?" On okay, the slide? sure. TAT is a transaction no, uh, activator that's uh, needed for a second generation vector. But for a third generation vector, because the fine primed LTR is uh, a hybrid with a, a virus, either CMV or RSV, so TAT is not needed for third generation vector. All of the origins vector are third generation because it's a transactivator. Um, people, um, the third generation remove that to make the virus uh, safer. Okay, so basically TAT is a viral protein. Yeah. By removing it, make the virus uh, production safer. It's improve safety issue. And uh, question. Okay, for um, one question is what is TU prime L? TU prime L, that's a um, transduction unit per ML. That's the infection unit. Basically, that's, that's a measurement. The, yeah. That's a measurement to see the, how the infectivity uh, of the particle, basically. Thing. Yeah, that's the infection titer of uh, the virus. Basically, functional units. Yeah, the correct. Transduction mm -hmm. unit. Uh, you mentioned about the, the MOIs. So how do I know uh, what is the optimal MOI for my cell line? Sure. Um, so uh, to optimize, so every cell line, um, it might need different uh, uh, MOI. So what you need to do, optimize, you can use uh, uh, like uh, uh, control particles expressing GFP. So you can use the GFP control particles to infect your cells to see at what MOI can get you 70% or 100% of uh, uh, transduction efficiency. So you can choose the optimal MOI for your cell line. So and say you have say common cell lines, and we have a list of those on our website. Yeah, we do. We do have a, a, a listed of recommended MOI for a common cell line posted on the identity page, and it's also in the FAQ too. So you are welcome to um, look at the website. Basically, yeah, people have experimented on on those cell lines have uh, already accumulated enough expertise. So those we share with you on our website, um, you can check. Um, so maybe we can include that in our um, in our follow-ups. Sure. You. Mm. So one question is also asking: you say, what is the uh, how long the insert that lenti vector can accommodate? Okay, that's a good question. So um, normally um, the LTR region, the lenti genome is about nine kb. But we have a tested on the, just to make a DDK tag, no pure selection marker, so you can uh, clone a larger insert. For that vector, we have been able to clone and test the 6.5 KB insert. So, okay. so that should be larger than, than 9 KB. The um, other uh, elements is about 4.5 KB. So we can, we are able to uh, clone the 6.5 KB. And the viral charter is, is, is very good. And that, that data is also posted on the website, too. Yep. Can we say basically safely that an um, insert of uh, under 4 KB can be safely packaged, but when it's over, uh, then it's basically individual cases. Um, individual cases, there will be, some of them will be accommodated for much larger size, but origin usually can guarantee you, yeah, can guarantee you the things under 4 KB, but when it's over, it will be treated as individual case. Yeah, we cannot guarantee everyone that's over will be able to package successfully into the virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, one question is, what's the confluence on the 10 centimeter dish plate on the day of a transfection? So on the day of a transfection, it's about um, 30 to 50 percent of a tra um, uh, confluence. When you, when you see the um, many cells list on, on the slide. I'll, I will provide the um, slide deck to you uh, in the email. Um, some of our scientists here 
are using, uh, trying to deliver not just the ORF or shRNA. They were working with those non-coding sequences or microRNAs. Can they also use lentivirus? Um, so basically, the insert it's not one any of our ORFs. So they basically, need, they they were asking, can they deliver a microRNA or deliver a non non coding sequence into? That's using a good digital? question. And uh, that sequence it should be able to, but it should not contain the polydenylation signal. If you remove the polydenylation signal, it should be fine. Because then, if you then if you add the polydenylation signal, it, the viral replication will stop. So remove that, it, it should be OK. OK. Um, so uh, one scientist asked, what are, for us to get the high lenti titer, what are the key factors uh, I, have to, um, I have to be careful with? So Mindra, you can summarize that? Sure, sure. I think I also have a slide of the factors affecting the viral packaging. One is the healthy state of the cells. So that's why you need to split the cell the day before transfection. And uh, the packaging plasmid, the, quali the plasmid quality and the ratio, um, that's a critical. And another critical uh, factor is the transfection efficiency. So that's why choosing a good transfection reagent is uh, very important. And that's uh, the reason that we provide a very robust uh, transfection reagent in our packaging kit, just to uh, ensure the high packaging efficiency. Uh, we also see another question, so what are, that's kind of related with this, that's why I add together. What are the advantages of turbofactin to the calcium phosphate? So calcium phosphate is, is cheaper, um, but the turbofactin is, a, the transfection efficiency is just a very high, you can easily get close to 100% transfection efficiency. It's easy to use and um, uh, the so very healthy after transfection too. Hmm. Okay, uh, I think we can probably still answer a few more questions. Um, the, the question is, how can we be sure that NT actually delivered the gene into the cell? Okay, um, deliver, I mean, you can either, if, if the gene is tagged or um, the vector has a, a, a marker, it's either selection marker or GFP. So after tr transduction, so you can see if it's a, like our SHR, um, it has a... You can show it on the slides. Sure, I can show you on the slide. So uh, such as with uh, this SHRA vector, it has um, both of the pure selection marker, you can select with the pure mycin. Or it also expresses GFP, so all the green cells uh, should be transduced. Um, if you don't have uh, this uh, selection marker, um, if the protein is tagged, so you can, if it's an epitope tag, you can do IF or do a Western blot. Uh, of course, with the GFP tag, you can see uh, fluorescence. Or uh, with your target specific antibody, do IF too. So uh, we, yeah, we, we understand everybody want to make sure that the trans transduction is working. That's why we're putting reporters on our vector so that the monitoring of the uh, successful delivery will be simpler, either using pure selection or use a GFP monitoring, yeah. Um, here is a specific question regarding concentrator. So can you bring to your concentrator slides? Sure. So the question is, between the first centrifuge and the second, using the concentrator, do you take off the supernatant? If so, how much? Oh, yes. So that's uh, the question is after the first con uh, concentration, um, uh, centrifuge. So you, you do, I, I did not put it here, you do remove the supernatant, the, the liquid. So, and the virus, it will be in the pellet. So, and then you need to re-centrifuge again to re remove any trace of the liquid. Uh, how much? That depends on how much virus you use. If, if you use a 2 ml, that the supernatant will be close to 2 ml. So this is like oh, basically a precipitation. You take away yes, all the... Yes, spin down the virus, yes. Yeah, the, the virus is in the pellet. Mm. So it's a, it's a very um, a simple and uh, 
convenient. You just uh, mix and incubate, spin down at 3500 3, G for 25 minutes. So it's, a, it's a very convenient. You don't, no ultra centrifuge uh, needed. Oh, one question is general regarding Lenti. They were asked, uh, the scientist is asking, what disease does Lenti cause? Uh, that's a, oh, okay. So Linti virus is derived from HIV, but the Linti uh, virus used for research in the Linti vector is very safe. Um, like the third generation, it's a de uh, um, replication deficient. So after transducing the cells, it will not produce uh, Linti virus anymore. Um, and uh, so there are a lot of uh, safety uh, factors uh, um, combined in the third generation. And they separated the Linti vector from the packaging plasma. So because the packaging plasma does not contain LTRs, they will not be packaged into the virus. Mm. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, we actually have us another video just talking about Linti safety, as that is one issue all the Linti app uh, users um, are concerned about. So we do have a separate video that uh, is in our YouTube. You are welcome to uh, take a look if you yeah. are concerning it's about that, the safety issue. So you hear about okay. uh, safety. Uh, here is, uh, let me see, maybe one more question. We will have time for that. There is a scientist saying that they experience difficulty in obtaining particles in their lab. So what they were concerning about their packaging plasmids. Is there any good suggestion you can offer them? So on the packaging plasma, it depends on your linty vector, is, uh, which generation, the second generation or third generation. Um, so if it's um, second generation, then if your packaging system is uh, third, then it will not work. Um, as I mentioned, the, um, maybe just uh, get a commercial available packaging kit, it can solve all, a lot of uh, frustration. Yeah, the, the packaging plasmid quality actually yeah. is really important, the purity of the package and the, the ratio. So all that factors has been considered, taken into consideration when we make our lenti packaging kit. So then that will uh, alleviate, uh, alleviate your, con uh, your uh, worry. So let the origin do the packaging plasmid composition so that you can use it right away. And yeah. it also has the transfection reagent turbo factor too, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think yeah that should and that will I know that there are still questions we have not addressed.